I wasn't supposed to get blue. Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information. All right, so this time we get a two-for-one special. What's happened is I purchased two guitars from the same guy. He taped the boxes together, and normally, yes, you would get a discount for this. His issue, though, is he shipped it with USPS, and for some reason there was two tracking numbers with this package, so they essentially charged him for shipping two of them anyways, even though they were mailed together. Had he had shipped this through UPS, it would have been about a third of this total cost. So I'm gonna go ahead and split these up. Now, I actually foreshadowed these guitars two months ago. I had a feeling that this would end up working out in the future. Sometimes getting rare guitars, it's just a waiting game. Well, to get them at the prices to do what I do anyways. Let's take a look in here. Ooh, I was not expecting a lift in case. I was expecting custom shop, not lifting, so that's a nice plus. All right, what's in here? <laughs> oh my, Blue Widow. I like these Widow guitars. I think it's important to document them before they get too rare. And I think people enjoy getting to see them up close. I mean, they're kind of gimmicky in a way. I mean, not everybody's gonna like them, but this is one from the regular Widow series. I've covered the initial Black Widow, which is kind of like an R7, whereas this one's more of just a traditional custom. So I figured we might as well get a nice review and demo on this one. And the last time you saw this one was in the Black Widow video when I told you about a collection of Widows that I was working on. Let's go ahead and see what's in this box. Now, if you remember from that video, that guy had four of them, and there's only two. So, what is the other color? Yeah, there we go. Custom shop case. That's what I was expecting to see. Now, I think that blue is absolutely gorgeous. But this one I got because I was really curious. But I was really excited this one was still left because it does not have a rich light board and it does not have an ebony board. What? Huh. This guy told me I was buying green and purple. I wasn't supposed to get blue. Now I'm really sad. I, I wanted the Green Widow. Aww, because that one had a rosewood board. Now this one, by the looks of it, it almost looks like it also has rosewood. Well, I like the Purple Widow too. I guess it was the blue one that I wasn't expecting. I'll have to ask him about that. Maybe it was a miscommunication, but I was really pumped for the Green Widow because it kind of looked like a gecko guitar. So to finish off the story here, I reached out to the seller because I know I've mixed up packages once before and it was just a nightmare. He seemed to be just as surprised as me, but unfortunately he must have mixed up the packages or something or he had a change of heart. I don't really know, but he said his house just burnt down. So I just let it go. The Green Widow got away. Maybe another day. Our next one to unbox is a tiny little box. Just as a word of advice, if you're ever shipping through the post office, usually it's actually cheaper to use these little boxes that they provide you. So you don't even have to buy, you know, any type of box to put your stuff in and you get a discount. Can't beat that. Kind of a fun story with this set. It is a set of vintage 70s Gibson tuners. Now these are made by Schaller. They just read Gibson on them instead of Schaller and they have the keystone tips instead of the, the style that they use. It's kind of a wider boat paddle type thing. But this is the same set of tuners, bridge and tailpiece to the RD artist that I bought the electronics out of. So, hey, if I ever get a RD that needs restoration, I've got these parts. 
I'm a bad hoarder when it comes to this stuff because you never know when you're going to need it. Sometimes I'll list them. I sell the tuner sets for 130 bucks. They usually sell within about four months. And then bridge and tailpiece, I usually just hoard those away. One of these days I'll do a, a parts drawer video just for fun. I guess we can use this time for a lesson here. If you're ever shipping something that's like hard and bulky instead of just like paper, it's better to not use this paper cardboard version of the flat rate envelope because it'll do stuff like this because there's space in it. It'll get beat up. Now, thankfully our product didn't get lost. I, I hope not anyways. So let's see what's in here. I got scared there for a second, guys. There was supposed to be two. I didn't see it. There we go. So these are Les Paul Goddess pickups. Whenever somebody rips these out and wants to sell them, I usually buy them because sometimes people will contact me because I made those videos about goddesses and people think I'll have parts. Well, that's the story with these guys. I just like to have them around. I think they're really cool. Now, this one came out of a rose goddess, so it's not quite like the SG Menace style. Those are more of like just a brass copper color, whereas these guys actually have a little bit of red to them. It's just their standard 490R, 498T pickup, but because they're a little bit special, you know, they're worth a little bit more. But something else that's different about them is notice flat slug pieces. You can not actually adjust the pull pieces on these. Kind of an interesting obscure part that you don't see every day. This box, it kind of got beat up, so I'm hoping it's okay. I think it's mainly just because, you know, the way the tape was done on this thing. I mean, this is why I use tons of tape, because this thing was so close to just, you know, busting open by itself. So let's go ahead and dig in. I see what he was doing. He was trying to save money by making the box smaller. And that's the only bad thing about packing material like this, is it doesn't, like, protect the box from collapsing in. What's on the inside of this one? Wow, this case is actually really clean, but you can tell it's 70s in style. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, so this is the, the Paul. Kind of the same thing going on with those goddess pickups. People just expect me to always have one of these to sell. Now this is sold to me as all original. I have some doubts. That knob has definitely been replaced. That switch tip has also been replaced. But really the only thing that matters for me personally on these guys is that the pickups are original, which they are. You can see it's got the T's on the top right there. And as long as there's no brakes, cracks, or repairs, you're good to go. Because the tuners, eh, they don't really matter. This one has the correct Grovers. The truss rod cover, I've never seen a DePaul truss rod cover look like that before. So that's probably somebody's engraving job. These things have gotten expensive lately, ever since they reissued them. It's been hard to find them. I only buy these if I can sell them for around a thousand bucks plus shipping. Because I think that's what they're worth. And for our next boxing here, unfortunately, I have to say goodbye to my Fender baseball bat. When I decided to make a video about these, I knew that was going to be the first time for some people ever hearing about these and they were going to be sold out by then. So that's kind of why I bought the second one. And I figured, hey, if nobody wanted it, I was plenty happy keeping it. But I was overwhelmed by the response. A lot of people were a little bit you know, mean about my pricing. It's like, no, I'm not going to sell it for the original $300 because I have no incentive to do so. Because these things, they're just awesome. But this is the one I used on the field. I mean, you can see it's got a few nicks and dings from me using it, especially on the paint at the cup side of the bat. I had fun making this video and I had a lot of people asking me, how did I even hear about these? Instagram, man. Even if it's not something that you want to check every day, sometimes it's worth following Gibson and Fender to know what they're up to. 
That's definitely helped me in a few times of finding content to talk about on my channel. I'm not a big Instagram user. I mean, I check it once in a while just for things like this. And I do this video would be kind of one of those damned if I do, damned if I don't, if I use this thing. But I'm happy I did because there's only 50 of them out there. And besides whoever wins that Fender contest and gets one for free, uh, this is probably the only bat that will ever be used. So if anything else for the other 49 people out there, now they know what it's like to use it so they don't have to be tempted to use theirs. And once my unused one sold, somebody offered me a boatload of cash for my used one. So unfortunately, I'm a businessman. I had to let it go. The only thing I could have seen myself using this for in the future, if I was building a stage for the show, it would be used as a decoration. Since I don't have that right now, I just decided to let it go to somebody who did have a spot for it. Our next one to pack up here, an old sun-faded gig bag. You know what that means if you've been watching the channel. So I'm actually really excited to share the story behind this guitar because in the video, I didn't. That's kind of what I reserved this one for is it's the personal stories. I got this one as a part of a trade for that Fender Prodigy I did a few months ago. I had that thing forever and it just seems like nobody wanted it. I thought the Fender Prodigy was actually pretty darn good for the money. I mean, it says it was made in the USA, but this thing, it was kicking around on my local Craigslist. And it was being advertised as having a huge crack in the neck. And the guy's photos made this look like an actual crack. And I saw it on Craigslist and I was like, yeah, that's cool. But then once that whole crack in the neck thing is like, uh, nope, no thank you. But then he had messaged me on Facebook Marketplace because I had that Fender up there. And he's like, you know, I know my guitar is worth more, but I would really like to have that one. And if my instrument doesn't sell within a week, would you do that trade? And I told him, yeah, I like Gibson's better than Fender anyways. That's what I'm more familiar with as far as the market goes. So I thought that was good. He had this thing up at like 650 and then he eventually went down to like 400 or something. Nobody wanted it locally. So we ended up doing the trade. And when I met up with him, I actually told him that, yeah, that's not a crack. That's just like a very light separation of the three piece maple neck with the dirt in it. And he's like, yeah, but nobody wants it anyways. <laughs> so after I cleaned it up, it definitely looks a little bit better. And this is a great guitar. I liked it. It sounded pretty darn good in my opinion. I was kind of surprised by some of the negative comments on the video, but that's kind of the way things go. I know Gibsons. I know how to make videos about them. I know how to clean them up, make them look good. This is what I do for a living. So let's go ahead and get this one off to its new owner. He has specially requested FedEx shipping. I don't normally ship with FedEx because I have to drive all the way across town to a drop off point and they're generally more expensive than UPS, but hey, I'm willing to accommodate them. So lots of stories were shared today. I hope you guys enjoyed them and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode of the Trogley's Guitar Show. Take care.